algebra. We invented math. By 1740 BC, the Egyptians had a symbol for zero in accounting texts, the symbol nor meaning beautiful. My grandmother kept a mountain of notebooks filled with her scrawled handwriting towering along the back closet wall. She kept a handful of old black and white photos, artifacts of a life left behind, not once but twice. Her survival a near miracle. Her escape from the war in Yaffa was retold so often it has become legend. The showers of leaflets etched with warnings, body parts in the city square, the mysterious stranger directing refugees amidst a blinding sandstorm. She was convinced it was the angel Gabriel in human form. One day, my grandmother ripped up the black and white portrait of her on her wedding day. She told my mother it weighed her down. Her dress was made by her sisters, hand beaded, embroidered, not white, but ivory because it was her second wedding when she married my grandfather. I never met him. He died of a brain aneurysm on the Jordan land bridge waiting to be let back into Palestine. All those years, he stubbornly held on to the notion that the land would be returned. They had to bury him and his family plot in Tilkeren. Land wasn't returned, but he had been returned to the land, a final act of stubborn rebellion. A fortune teller told my aunt and the women in our, that the women in our family were cursed, never to be truly happy. How to lift it, I ask as a nine-year-old, already too much knowing coursing through my scrawny limbs. Lift it, they laughed at me. There are no curses, only Allah has that type of power. It's sacrilegious to believe in curses, they repeated. Yet I still spent the better part of the summer of my 12th year dragged around to palm readers in, with, in storefronts with the words tarot cards lit up in tiny windows. The women greeting my mother often spoke in hush whispers as though not to disturb the wall-sized portraits of Jesus framed on the wall. Does he still love me? Will he come back? She was married to him less than four years, but he left and cheated on her countless times. He would disappear for weeks, sometimes months at a stretch. He would, we would have to move back to my uncle's house every time since she couldn't afford rent on her own. About halfway through their relationship, she called me to where she was standing in the living room in my uncle's basement to her wooden bureau. She was rummaging through the top drawer. I was already familiar with the drawer as that was the one that held the yet unattained wonders of womanhood, perfume, eyeliner, red lipstick. She pulled out a pack of blue Gillette razor blades. My favorite part of that drawer was her department store eyeliner that I would steal to practice on myself. I loved the way the dark line around my eyes made me look like Queen Nefertiti, at least until I put my thick rimmed glasses back on. Eyeliner was worn to shield from the sun, my aunt once said, and for spiritual protection. At the time, I didn't understand what she meant. A couple months later, my mom would notice her dulling eyeliner pencil and buy me my own brown and not black. I wasn't old enough for the black, she said but yet somehow old enough for her to share her carefully crafted plan to slit her wrists in my stepdad's family's house, not really deep, to get his attention. She went on explaining her motive to physically manifest the consequences of his actions or some such nonsensical adult rule. The plan was very clear. I remember there might've been notebook paper with her scribbles, but can't be sure. Memory is a fickle thing. I do remember the plan though. I was given strict instructions to pretend shock, but not so dramatic as to cause someone concern for me. She was to slit her wrists, but not really slit them, remember? Just enough, not too much, always in control. I will be okay. No, it won't hurt that much. Their voices will be sad and upset. Don't let that bother you. It's all part of the plan. I remember asking, why hurt yourself? Why do you even want him back after all he's done? I don't remember if she had a response. I remember her coming down the stairs after her night at the hospital, her face yellow and wan, her wrists wrapped up with thick gauze, tales of only such and such amount of stitches. In order to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, I didn't know the difference because I was 11. It didn't matter. 
I remember thinking as I swept freshly sharpened eyeliner over my lash line. She wasn't going to see them anyways. Thank you.